Well, it looks like the closet's had some more work done. Hey, so welcome back. Uh, as you can see, the, the closet has come a little further than when you last saw it. I've put an accent wall in it. And I mean, if I'm gonna put a mosaic, why can't I put an accent wall? I get a, <laughs> the same question all, all over and over and over again. Why are you putting a mosaic in the closet? Well, it's because I want to. So now I'm probably gonna get a question. Why are you wasting so much time in making a closet look so nice? It's still part of my house and I'm still gonna see it. So I want it to look nice. Let's go through what we've done so far. So a couple days ago, I put on the blue paint, which is supposed to mimic kind of like the ocean. And then uh, yesterday, uh, while that was curing, I decided to put in all the shelving. I uh, basically just used the wood that I have sitting here in the hallway that's supposed to be for my bedroom closet. Basically just process that into my shelving pieces. Distressed it a little bit, stained it with a, I think a nice color stain. I don't normally stain wood unless it's like just this SPF stuff uh, because it doesn't really look nice on its own. So after I did that, I had to figure out how I was going to attach to the walls. And what I ended up doing is using some piano hinge because it's what I had and I thought it would be kind of a neat look. I ended up cutting that inside my house because it is cold outside. And let me tell you, it's really cold. And uh, that brings us to here. I'm at a point where I don't actually know how I'm going to achieve what I want to achieve. I know the physical uh, method I'm going to use, but I don't know what goes into making something look the way I have planned in my head. So this concept where I'm not sure how to do something when I have an idea of what I want to do usually only pertains to unpracticed ideas or um, unlearned practices, if you will, such as what I want to do with this closet. So I'm gonna bring you through a little bit of what goes on in my mind when I hit a roadblock like this. Now imagine this is my brain. Throughout my travels, I will absorb inspiration or come up with my own creative ideas. And the inspiration can kind of be anything. It's nothing too particular or specific. Certain ideas are suitable for anything, place, or audience. And some are a little more special, let's say. They need a little more thought, lest it provoke confliction. For those ideas, I look and wait for a space to realize them. So as my brain toils over the details, I continue to go about life until something just clicks. That's this project. I've wanted to do Mosaic for a while, and I've had no place to do it. Till now. And when that was complete, another click. An accent wall. But it needs something more. And I'm just waiting for that other click. As my brain searches for that, and it will, let's go over what we have so far. First, let's go through how I wanted the closet to function at a practical level. I needed there to be enough room for Hank's food bin and for our recycling bin on the main shelf. And then from there, I needed to also have some space underneath where I could put the vacuum, our water, because we have to get jugged water, our brooms, and then up top here, we're not sure exactly what we're going to use that for, but we wanted to have some space while still being able to see the whole mosaic because that's kind of the point of this closet, to see the mosaic. It's the point of the mosaic, actually, to be seen. We want it to be seen and we want the closet still to remain practical. One more thing that to me was very important. I like cubbies and I wanted to put cubbies in the closet. So I put a cubby right here above the doorway and I needed the shelving to be able to support me or anyone else who decided to step on it to then access the said cubby. Now I haven't finished this cubby because I'm not sure what I want to do in there. I may do something artistic with that as well. I'm not quite sure. So let's go back to my brain for a second. Ah man, as it's been said, sometimes when I have an idea, more ideas are sparked from it. One little thing can snowball and evolve into something else if I let my creativity flow. So it's like some creativity breeds more creativity, such as in this closet. Um, I wanted to put a mosaic on the ceiling and the mosaic was supposed to be a feature of the closet, but now the closet is becoming a feature of the house, which is fine, I like that, but I'm having trouble thinking of how to make what looks good in here 
look good on there with my new ideas that have bred from the initial idea. And uh, it's driving me a little nuts. I'm not sure what I'm going to do because I've never done this before. That. Did you see that? That. I've never done that before. There it is again. I've never done that before. I don't know how I'm going to do that because that's something new. And I like trying new things, but sometimes when uh, you have a new idea, it doesn't always pan out. Yeah, there it is again. It looks great, but how do I get there? Rather than go insane trying to think of how I'm gonna do that, I'm gonna take a little break and think about it a little bit. Um, I have some banana bread and I really like banana bread. Banana bread is probably the most delicious thing that you can eat. And I mean, it has such a richness to it that it almost demands the same respect that you would give like a, like a cigar or like a fine scotch or something like that. But uh, I mean, like since those things are disgusting and banana bread is delicious, you shouldn't give like banana bread a little more respect, if you know what I mean. Like, let me elaborate here a little bit. When one is enjoying it, I think you should uh, like be wearing your finest attire. You should have a fancy chair to sit in. Uh, near books if possible, you know, because it's classy. <laughs> you know, classy like dress shoes. You should also have like some milk and like a side table to put it on. Nothing too crazy. It makes sense, right? Banana bread is delicious. And now that I've consumed that, I've thought of how I'm going to execute this a little bit. Bananas are brain food, right? So thank you to my mother-in-law for making me the banana bread. I now know how I'm going to make this closet even more... Grand is not the right word. I don't know what the right word is, but I'm going to make it that. Put in the comments what you would say is the proper word for what I'm doing with this closet. <laughs> And here we are. After some trial and error, uh, I think I've come to my initial vision. I wanted the illusion of coldness to come through, which I think does. I wanted it to look deep, which I think does. And I wanted it to tie in with the warm colors I used for the wood planking, which I think it does. So let's have a closer look, shall we? So I wanted this to look like kind of the bottom of an ice flow, like an iceberg. If you look at pictures of icebergs, it kind of looks like this. So the different techniques that I use to achieve this are not new techniques. It's just something that I haven't really done before. The ladies at the paint store said it was called ombre. So I don't know. Do you agree? Is this ombre? Whatever it is, I like the way it looks. It kind of gives... Uh, the illusion that this mosaic then transitions into this painted wall and it kind of all ties together. Now to tie in the warm colors that I use for the shelving, I took these uh, piano hinges that were rusty and clear coated them. So the cold colors of the steel and the warm colors of the rust help tie in everything together. Plus brown looks good with this type of blue. Well, really any blue, in my opinion. Now, I'm not educated in color theory, so perhaps I haven't done something right, but I like it, and this is how it's gonna stay.
Now having it all done, it ties together really nicely. I have the shelving spaced how I want it to be so it doesn't obscure the, uh, let's say the crown jewel of the closet, the mosaic. And the mosaic doesn't look tacky. Often mosaics can look out of place, which is why I wouldn't put one in my living room or kitchen, say. It would kind of take away from the aesthetic I'm going for in the rest of the house. The paint job doesn't look murally, but it kind of uh, expresses what I was going for, cold and deep. And I wouldn't really put that in the rest of my house either. It wouldn't really fit. So instead, the hallway closet, you know, kind of becomes a hidden gem. It fits with the house in a way, but not completely. So doing it this way kind of allows me to explore the idea I had, some of the locked up creativity I wanted to try out. You may argue that I should have put it where everyone can see it, that it's a waste of time and effort to hide it away, but it's exactly where I want it to be. Plus, I wasn't sure of it to begin with. I've never done mosaic or this type of uh, ombre painting on a wall before. So, you know, I decided why not put it where everyone puts stuff they're not sure of in the hallway closet. And yes, it will be covered up by the things I put inside, but it's a closet. I designed it to be functional as well as kind of look cool. Um, you can just think of it the same way you would uh, a nice designer suit. They have nice linings in them with patterns and embellishments and whatnot that no one can see, but you know it's there. All right, so I'm working on my closet here, and I hear Hank just start barking, right? I'm just putting in some shelves and stuff. I didn't really document that, so I guess this is where the vlog starts. And the barking, remember uh, Ryan from Parkland Films, who uh, also helped me with the bobcat stuff? Well, he's trespassing right now. How's it going? Hey, good. Hop just, in. just doing my uh, my driveway, huh? <laughs> All right, guys. I told you he was the nicest dude around. <laughs> He's just doing my driveway for no reason. I mean, it is snowing like a whatever uh, whatever analogy you can think of. It's snowing a lot, and we probably got how many inches would you say? Probably about oh, six to eight inches. Six to eight inches. Yeah, something like that. Thanks for doing this, man. Finished my neighbor. Well, first I went up to my dad's and his plow was having issues. So I jiggered it and got it going. Yeah. And then did his. I went home, did my neighbor's, and then just finished mine. So. Oh, okay. And I'm like, oh yeah, Josh. <laughs> my <laughs> Ashley, she's at work right now. She's going to be super excited about this when she comes home. She's going to be like, what the hell? <laughs> And one of the things I wanted, this house is kind of Goldilocks to me. I wanted a long driveway. Yeah, it's nice when you come in like this. Yeah, for sure. I just thought it would be sweet. Yeah. And then not only that, the house was a piece of shit, so I was able to do whatever the heck I wanted <laughs> with yeah. uh, repairing it and like doing renos and whatnot. Yeah, man, Ryan is one of the nicest guys I know. Really appreciate that, dude. You guys, uh, if you like adventure type uh, videos and stuff, you should check out his uh, channel. I'll link uh, his newest series down in the description because it's it's actually very interesting. He went and uh, uh, took a, a classic old car, or I, I guess it's classic, I don't know, uh, out to Alaska and, uh, and went to that bus, the Into the Wild bus. You might know that from the book or the movie. Anyways, uh, me and Ashley watched it all. There's seven, seven parts to it. So yeah, I'll link that in the description.